If you have watched my latest video, you may have seen this effect right at the end of the video. I thought it was cool, so I wanted to show you how I did it, so you can do it too. Although you could use the particle command and just spawn particles like that, I decided to make a plugin because I know how to write words in a different language and make it do stuff. So instead of having command blocks that may look something like this depending on how many effects you're playing, I decided to condense it all down into one menu and all you have to use is just a few variables. So pretty much the main command on this plugin is slash creator or you could use slash cr for short. And if you press space you'll see all of the actions that you could use. For now we're just going to look at the menu and then you just hit enter and then boom, menu open. The first thing we're going to want to look at is this location variable. You just click it, it will plop right in your inventory. If I left click while holding this location variable, a line will appear and that location has been set. If I swap hands, you can preview the location and that green particle is the X, Y, and Z value and then the other particles is just showing the rotation. Now that is a static location. Let's say you wanted a dynamic location that'll move as an entity moves by itself. For example, if I punch this pig, it'll set its location and if it moves, the location is still set to where I punched him. But if I punch him while I'm shifting, then it's going to set a dynamic location. And now if I preview it, you'll see it'll move whenever he moves. Now onto the particles, if you do slash creator menu again, and you click on the particle, it'll plop right in your inventory. And to set its values, you use a command slash creator particle. And then you have all of these stuff you can set. If you type in set, and then space, you'll see all the particles that you can set the particle to. For this example, I'm just going to use totem. And you can see the item changes, and I can preview it by swapping hands. And you can set the amount of particles by using slash creator, particle, amount, and then setting however amount of particles you want. And now if I swap hands, you can see they're all stacked on top of each other. And that's where the values come in. And you can set them just like so. I didn't know exactly what to call these values, as the, it acts differently depending on the particle. It's best I just show you, so I can just put in 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and then 0 0.2. And now if I preview it, each particle has a random offset to it. But if I do slash creator particle type, and I set the type to direction, now those values are going to act as motion. They no longer have an offset, now they just have very slight motion. I'll make the values a lot higher so you can see, and you can really see that motion now. This may be different for some particles, but in general, if you have the particle type set to default, these values are going to act as an offset, and then the fourth value is going to act as an offset variation. But if you have the type set to direction, the values are going to act as motion in the X, Y, and Z, and then the fourth value is going to be motion variation. I encourage you to just mess with these values and just see what they do, because particles are a little wacky on how they work. But the next thing is timelines. And you can make a timeline by either doing slash creator new timeline, and then put in a timeline name and this is showing up all the timelines that I've previously created but if you just type in a new name so I'll type a new timeline again it'll give you this item and technically this timeline does not exist until I actually put something into it or you can also do slash creator menu and then put in a timeline name and it'll open up this little menu. If you hover over any of these glass panes, you'll see it has the ticks, the seconds, and the little timestamp. You can read the controls. If I right click, it'll move a page and you can see the ticks go up and up and I can keep going. Anyway, if I middle click on any of these panes, it'll open up a timeline track. And in here, I can input a particle and a location for that particle. So let's say I put this totem particle right there and then put the location right there so this particle is going to spawn wherever this location is and then if i escape it'll open this back up and i put this on 20 ticks so whenever this timeline is being played after one second this track is going to play and there are two ways you can play a timeline you could either hold a timeline item in your hand and then swap hands or you can do slash creator play and then the timeline name and once i do that after one second particles are going to play right on that pig Boom. Now, of course, there's more. If you go into the creator menu, if you click on this timelines, it'll just show all of the timelines. This has the same functionality as the timeline menu. You can left click and right click to switch pages if you have enough timelines. But this is where the magic happens. Click on that. It'll plop right into your inventory. Now, if I open up this timeline, which you can do by right clicking a timeline item, I can copy everything that is in this track. 
all I have to do is shift and right click. Now I can paste it by shift and left clicking on an empty track and it will paste it right on in there. But I can also take the select tool and then left click on any track and it will select the first position. And then if I right click somewhere else like down here, I have now just made a selection. Now if I hover over the select tool and I swap my hands, it is going to paste my clipboard through the selection. And now each one of these tracks has the same totem and dynamic location. So if I play this timeline again for 2.5 seconds each tick, it's going to play the particle at the pig's location. It's pretty sweet. I have a completely black room and then on my timeline, it will spawn three particle effects. The totem that spawns on my location, which offsets the Y value by seven. So it's going to be seven blocks above me and also a relative offset, which moves five blocks in front of wherever I'm looking. Then it has these flames, which is just using a relative offset. This one's positioned at the left side, and then this one's positioned at the right side. And you can easily just play the effect in F1 mode, and you get this effect that you can green screen and just use in whatever project you want to. And I set it up in a way where, if I look down, the effect will appear quite different. I also made this simple texture pack that just retextures the sea lantern, glowstone, and the frog lights to different colors. So you can easily green screen any particles or really just anything. And I'll link the texture pack and the plugin in the description. That's it. Farewell.